All right, Finns News fans, uh, sorry about the late delivery on this uh, tour video I've been working on, but I've been sick as a dog all week, so uh, this is about the quickest I could get it out. All right, I'm going to take, I'm taking in this film study, I'm taking tour from 2019 and the Dolphins versus the Jets offense to compare and tr contrast the offense of Tua and his skill set with the Miami Dolphins offense and Fitzpatrick's skill set. And honestly, there was a lot of similarities, a lot of good things. It really looks like Tua is going to fit this offense uh, like hand to glove. It seems, um, it seems that Flores and Greer really built this offense with Tua in mind. Anyway, first thing we're going to look at is pressure. Dolphins' offensive line is better, but they still have been letting up a lot of pressure. If Fitz wasn't getting the ball out in 2.4 seconds, there would have been a ton more sacks. I know Kinley has only let up about five pressures, which is really good uh, so far this season. But pressure, too much pressure, obviously, is going to affect any quarterback, no matter how good they are or how, fa <coughs> how fast they are. And two is just the same as any other quarterback. Uh, look, look here, this, you're going to see this. You saw this all day. Jesse Davis had about three or four plays where pressure came in quick. Fitz got that ball out. If it was just a half a second later, he's getting blasted and the play's not happening. And this is something that fans need to really understand when they talk about his performance. Again, this is the touchdown here. This is the touchdown here. Look how quick that pressure gets. And this is on Kinley. And he has to get that ball out that quick. If not, he's getting hit. There was, there was a series of plays where Fitz got blasted. The line just melted two plays in a row. And this is against the Jets, who they aren't notoriously good pass rushes, and yet they're putting the pressure on. Uh, this, and this is what you don't want for Tua. He, he hasn't played since the injury. He hasn't, hit, I mean, he hasn't finished. He hasn't completed one season without having serious injury and you don't want him to get hit maybe and maybe it could be adjusted by a proper training regimen and uh, a different style of play but still you have to look at he has been injured every season but the as far as a good thing with two look at this ah oh, Fitz could never do that this kid you know I, I wonder about his upper body looks a little underdeveloped but those legs he's like a running back this was a beautiful move. I mean, you never see these lone rushes that are coming in. They're going to think twice. Offensive coordinators to think twice. And this is the, the beauty with Tua. He can move like that, get on the run, but he always keeps his eyes upfield. And if there's an open receiver, he's putting the ball down the field. That is something Fitz could never dream of doing. But with all this movement and this pressure, there's, there's always the risk of this. And that is what I didn't see anybody talk about or any fans. This was a brutal hit. A lot of quarterbacks, you see, they get knocked out of the game on this. Look at this. And directly after this, about two or three plays, is when Fitz throws that pick. It, he was locked onto the receiver. I mean, this had to ring your bell. Look at this. And this should, this is brutal. Look at that. Putting the form right and drive his head into the, into the, into the turf. I mean, that was brutal. But again, you know, Fitz and uh, Tua, they share a lot of similarities. You know, you would say, oh, well, you know, Fitz is Fitz. But Fitz has a lot of great qualities. He wouldn't have started all this time and put all these, you know, these yards and touchdowns up if he wasn't talented. And it's the rhythm throwing. This is where the comparison of Drew Brees comes in. You know, Tua, when he's on, when he's got that quick rhythm throw, like, you know, they compare him to Drew Brees, his pass is a nice smooth, catchable. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's beautiful to watch. And a lot, of, a lot of times you hear people say, oh, well, you know, he was surrounded by great receivers. And that's true. And a lot of times those receivers would make big plays, you know, for a small, short pass. But there was a lot of, there was, there was at least a handful of touchdowns that I saw dropped. So I think it's a give and take as far as the talent of the receivers and Tua goes. I believe he was let down some, um, and he was also helped out. So these are the RPOs. 
You know, you saw two touchdowns on the RPOs with the uh, rollouts by the tight ends. You know, obviously, two is going to be able to do all that stuff and then add to it. But, but one thing that you saw Fitz do that you don't want Tua to do is this, the lead blocking and the extra physicality. You know, this did, his extra physicality helped this offense a lot, a lot, and that aspect is not going to be uh, in this offense going forward. At least I hope it's not. But, you know, you can see here, this is another thing that I noticed with him. He's great on th – two is great at throwing on the move. And they talk a lot about him being the most accurate passer in the history of the game. This is a little inflated because if you watched his, at least from 2019, at least 30 to 40% of the plays were behind the line of scrimmage or at the line of scrimmage. So the completion rate was definitely pumped up. And then there, he has a tendency to throw off platform if, there's, if he's on the move or on pressure. See, look at this. This is not how you want to look. I understand there's the pressure, but this would have been a pick or deflection in the NFL. And that's the thing uh, that is true. The receivers had lots of separation with their corners, and I don't think you're going to see that kind of separation. You know, with that kind of separation, you have a lot more leeway as far as your accuracy. The good news is that I think that He's probably worked very hard on that throwing platform. Look at this. Yes. And you'll see it multiple times. It happens a lot. It's not just one. But you see, when he gets his body into it like this and he has the proper platform, it's beautiful. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. In rhythm. Just comes out so nice, so catchable. You, know, you saw Fitz doing this kind of stuff. Pac would break down and he would scramble up field. And, you know, he helped this offense tremendously giving up his body running up field and then there was you know the scrambles where you dump the ball off and stuff like that that's all nice you know this was huge but two is going to take it to a whole nother level you now you can see obviously you can do the roll out designated uh pass plays to uh, specific receivers you know similar things that, that that fitz can do and did which really helped this offense so you're not going to see much difference in that but you know what you're going to see this is this this is what he can do here and this is nice. This is nice. But look what look what Tua can do. Watch this. Uh, it, this is the kind of stuff you you really didn't see too much of with Fitz. And this is this is something he could never do. Uh, instantly change direction, get back up field. This is special. And this is the type of stuff. And this play was very very impressive because he was able to navigate mentally navigate the traffic. And I think that's one thing I really like about Tua's game that I saw. He's able to read body language of defenders and uh, instantly be able to see the traffic, how it's moving, and have anticipation to throw to the receiver. This is beautiful. And look at this. He throws on the move, stops on the dime. A lot of quarterbacks, they have to stop, plant, and throw. But then the quarterback's already there, but not Tua. This is this is a special gift that he has. This is the thing that makes one of the things that makes him great. Another thing too is I really um, you see here here again. This is another play with the off platform, and he's had a lot of time to work on it and watch his own tape. I would have to believe they're going to fix this. See, you could this looks exactly like the last play where it was off, and again this is not you can't you can't continue with this. One play could be a pick, turn for a pick six, and that can change the game. It's, this is not college. But, again, this is just platform stuff. This is technical things that he can easily work on. If you, if you notice how Brady and Drew Brees, they worked on their <coughs> throwing platform, their technique. Um, they improved dramatically. And if Tua can make even half the change that Brady and Brees and a bunch of other excellent quarterbacks have, imagine what he can do. So here's another thing, him putting the ball up high for the receiver to go up and get it. This is exactly what Williams and Parker thrive at. So you, this, this is right here, there's not going to be much of a change behind, you know, they're going to develop their chemistry, they're going to know that oh, I'm going to throw it high here, I'm going to throw it behind you here, and if he can do this in college, and look how nice that is, it comes in perfect, look at this. And he's got a stronger arm than Fitz. 
and uh, Fitz, I love him, and I, I was like really uncertain about the change, but his arm is getting tired, and that was, that was the problem. See, like here's the last pick. <clears throat> Look, he's he gives everything he's got here, everything he's got, and this thing comes short. You know, he had to know his limitations on this. He should never have thrown that ball. But if you had the right arm, this was a 50-50 ball at least. All right, Parker was ready to make the break for it. And this, this is something that Tua can make happen. So in summary, it's going to be interesting as the weeks go by to see how crucial uh, Fitzpatrick's experience is against better defenses, better pass rushes, Compared to to his ability to get on the move, throw on the move, uh, pick up chunk plays on the run. Another aspect that I, I I really didn't touch on with Tua again, this was me kind of operating with uh, on, on with one leg on this one, is Tua's quick release. I you know I grew up with Marino, has the fastest release I've ever seen. I'm not saying they're they're equal, but Tua has an exceptionally fast release. And this is going to be big, especially for the slants, the rhythm throws. And I think that's going to come into play as well. But there's going to be an arc between his talent, his ability to endure punishment, and his ability to gain experience. I think as the experience comes, it's going to limit his chances for an injury because he'll understand how to avoid it and it's going to increase his production but can those two arcs cross at the right point and that's my only concern with Tua this offensive line is better and fans I think underappreciated how Fitzpatrick helped this offensive line out with his play sacrificing his body his quick release his, his experience his intelligence it, it, he really picked up this offensive line. Can Tua do the same thing in the short term? I do believe with the play action and RPOs um, and the Dolphins scheming up right, play calling right, they can buy him enough time until he can get that experience. Of course, then around the you know five, six, seven game mark, there's going to be tape on him and he's going to have another hurdle to get over. But if we can get to that first hurdle and even him playing decent, it'll be a great sign. So here, it's a big day today, huge day. Uh, probably the most exciting day, to tell you the truth, as a, as a Dolphins fan in 20 years. It's all on the line. It's all on the table. So Finn fans, get ready. Uh, this could be something amazing.